We're here with the author of A Sacred Oath, former Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper. Um, okay, you describe Oval Office meetings that were, quote, a melee of bad ideas pushed and supported by his White House sycoph sycophants. Whose influence was most dangerous, in your opinion? Well, you already, uh, uh, you already described Stephen Miller, who proposed these outlandish ideas, and you talk about, you know, the, the idea of deploying a quarter million troops to the border to deal with the caravans, which was just absurd, right, to consider that. But there were, you know, other things as well that he would propose at times where he would gin the president up. And we're having these discussions from June, July, August of 2020, talking about uh, the unrest in Portland, Seattle, elsewhere. He would keep talking about, like, an American dystopia where cities are burning down and mayhem is ruling. And, and uh, to his credit, General Mark Milley would point out he carried these facts and statistics around and he'd say, look, there's only this many cities and it's a minority of protests, et cetera, et cetera. Let's not make this worse. And it, uh, Milley and Attorney General Bill Barr actually became very good partners to me in terms of pushing back on these ideas to say, no, 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 look, this is a law enforcement issue. Let law enforcement, particularly state and local, do, deal with it. And, and don't get the military involved. This is not the place for the military. You don't have to be in the administration to smell the crazy coming off of Stephen Miller. It, you can see it a mile away. Are you surprised that that guy specifically, I mean, guys like that, but let's just go with that guy specifically, who was so redolently crazy and poorly informed and just balls out racist, would still get jobs right now. He is working for David McCormick's campaign in Pennsylvania, a supposedly reasonable Republican who hired him in order to get Trump's endorsement, but then didn't get it, and yet Stephen Miller is still sucking on the GOP political gravy because no one has the courage to put these guys out to pasture. Does that shock you that people that you know are terrible for America can still get jobs in mainstream political circles? Uh I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. You know, one of the things I've been talking about is how does the GOP, my party, I'm a Reagan Republican, kind of how do we get this divorce from Donald Trump and those around him? Because, look, the, the challenge is President Trump pushed a lot of traditional Republican policies, right? Lower taxes, deregulation, conservative judges, rebuild the military, strong border security, all good things. But a mannequin with an elephant stapled to his chest right. could have gotten those but, same but, policies but goes too from that far, Right. <laughs> So, so my message to Republicans is, to my fellow Republicans, is, look, there's a whole new generation of Republican candidates we, I hope will emerge after the midterms and run, and you can do it. You can get a person who puts, first of all, country over self as compared to the prior president, and who will advance core Republican ideas and grow the base and bring the American people together. I've been saying the biggest threat facing our country today is not China. It's actually this extreme political partisanship that is really causing dysfunction in Washington, D.C., and we have to break this. I mean, you know how few Republicans in office there are like you. You're a minority. It's, <laughs> it's strange how, how few people like you there are. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not calling you a Republican politician, but certainly you support those policies. Thank, thanks for so, not insulting me. There's so, <laughs> but there's so few people who have your opinion, or at least will espouse it publicly Well, right at least now. we'll espouse it publicly. Okay. That's the issue, right? Well, let's talk about, uh, you know, the question like my friend Jake Tapper asked you the other day, is that right. given that you knew all of this, why did you wait to put it in a book? Doesn't that seem like you're trying to sell books as opposed to protect the country? And let right. me say, even if I accept your answer to Jake, because I, I watched the interview, that, and as you said today, you're a, a break, a, 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 a what's circuit, circuit breaker? breaker. Circuit right. breaker. Circuit breaker. Somebody else put in there may not have made those pushbacks that you did. Right. What does that say to you about the state of our country that it's just this one man in this position pushing back against the crazy and that you can't be truthful to the yeah. American people because the founders imagined that an informed public would save our country, not one guy, however well-meaning. Yeah. Well, look, it wasn't just one person. It was there were other members in the cabinet. The, the but you did know all this stuff but felt you couldn't right, tell us. Right, right, because if, look, take at any point there in the, in, the, in, in the story, right, in 2020, if I'd come out, I would have been fired, which is the president's prerogative, and he probably should have fired me on the spot. But my rationale is, if I'm not here to stop a quarter million troops to the border when the president proposes it in, prior to June 1st, who would be there when he wants to shoot Mex missiles into Mexico? And if I stand up then and speak out, who will be there to push back on June 1st when he wants to send 10,000 paratroopers into the streets of America? Or shoot the protesters in the legs. Who, and, shoot the, and who will be there to stop Ven the Venezuela talk in October? Who will be there 
with the Iran, t I mean, that was kind of my But where rationale. are we as a country, in your opinion, if you can't tell us that? We deserve to know that to make our choice. And I take yeah. the rationale, yeah. but where are we as a country if you yeah. can't tell us that? Look, it, it, it's a great question. And I said, look, the opening pages, the first five pages, I talk about this dilemma. I wrestled with it. I talked to my wife, and my wife says, look, as, an, as your wife, please quit. But as an American, please stay. And I, I have to go so far as to contact my predecessors from both parties, I reached out to Colin Powell, the late General Powell, and he says, you gotta stay. Because I don't know who the president is gonna put in behind me, right? And we see what happens on November 9th mm -hmm. when I'm gone and the Pentagon is decapitated and you get this whole crew of loyalists that comes into the Pentagon and you, these things start happening, right? Attack Iran, withdraw troops from Somalia, it goes on and on. And fortunately, they only had, at that point, 60 days. Think if they had eight months. The memoir is a sacred oath. It's available now. Secretary Esper, thank you so much for being here. We'll be right back with John Apatow. Thank you.